us. We have gathered this evening to for our usual Monday special. And today, as has been broadcast already, we have the topic, devotion to the sacred heart in the family. And we have, with, I have with me joining via the name of Samuel Semiheba, Reverend Sister Juliana. Reverend Sister, are you there? Yes, please. Okay. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. And he sacrificed, he offered himself by dying on the cross. Where he shared his heart flowing with blood and water. We pray this day for all of us that we may appreciate love. The divine heart of your son. Grant unto us a true devotion so that we may loving, loving him, him may love you as God, Father, and God, Son, and, Father, Holy, Son Spirit. and Holy Spirit. Divine Thy heart of Jesus, Jesus. Thy, kingdom Thy kingdom come. We make we our make prayer, our prayer Christ, Christ our Lord. Our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name, In the of, the name Father, of the Father, and of the Son, and, and, of, the and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 So my dear friends, as we are here, would love to have a chat with our Reverend, Reverend Sister Juliana Dankwa. And I would love to introduce uh, Sister. Reverend Sister. You can unmute yourself, please. Okay, great. Sister, may you please introduce yourself so that we can now have you to do the presentation of the devotion. Thank you, Father Raymond. Good evening, beloved people of God. Like Father said, that we can now know. I am Sister Juliana Michaelina Dangwa of the Congregation of Apostles of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So it's a great pleasure to be with you and share with you this beautiful spirituality and devotion. The center of our Christian faith. May we, may we please find out, uh, are we, Livinia, are we, is, is, are we, is she head? Yes, please, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we can all stay muted, yes. So like the, the topic suggested for this day's reflection and sharing is devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus in family life. My congregation has a mission for the family. And we have a group of families who either are already consecrated to the heart of Jesus or they seek to be consecrated to the heart of Jesus and live with deep commitment to Christian faith. So this part will be a sort of introduction and then we get to understand why the need for the devotion of the sacred heart of Jesus in our family lives. A family life founded on the very heart of God. The heart of Jesus is the heart of our, the true in God. The heart of Jesus is the heart of the Holy Trinity. May I ask her to please pass the next slide?
person who was moved to act with her heart. What does it mean to have courage? Think about the most courageous people you know. Those who keep the faith. Who conquer their fears. Who overcome challenges with greatness. Perseverance. Transform dreams into reality. That is the literal meaning of the word courage. Imagine how much courage it takes for someone to make God the absolute center of her life and her days. To live for God alone. To realize the dream of making the heart of Jesus known and loved by everyone. That someone was Mother Clelia Merloni. She lived in Italy from 1861 to 1930. And she created a mission of love that continues to grow with thousands of people from Europe, the Americas, Asia, and Africa. The mission known as the Congregation of the Apostles of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was founded by Clelia Merloni in 1894. Think of the many challenges that she had to face courageously in order to begin a religious institute of women. Women who heard the call to be an apostle to bring to all people the life-giving word, the faith that saves, the witness of courage, and the love that flows from the heart of Christ. Mother Clelia entrusted her entire existence to Jesus. She learned from him that, like the grain of wheat that must fall to the earth and die in order to bear fruit, she too must die to herself in order to bring life to the Institute. In addition to being courageous, Mother Clelia was humble, pure, simple, and cultivated charity in every situation. She encouraged her sister apostles to be like a brightly burning lamp that provides light to all those in need, while also providing a human and Christian formation. In the words of Mother Clelia, God visits us daily with many lights, with holy teachings, with inspiring words, and with saintly examples. Recognizing the divine presence in all moments of her life, Mother Clelia lived for God alone with perseverance and fidelity, which are characteristics of the saints. The apostles are firm in their desire to share her life, teachings, and example in all their missions around the world. Mother Clelia is an example to the whole world of someone who lived in a state of grace, that is, in full communion with God. She had the courage and love to live her life for someone greater than herself. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, who also lives within each one of us. Thank you, Father Raymond. Before we continue, I would like to invite my dear participants to try to identify. I want this encounter to be that of interaction and interactive sharing. Identify and 
um, mention some of the virtues, some of the benefits, some of the experiences, some of the attitudes that one can cultivate living in intimacy with the sacred heart of Jesus, trying to learn from the sacred heart of Jesus that can help build a home, not just a house, not just a meeting of people, but a family founded on the Christian basis of Christian virtues. Um, we can have this sharing now before we continue with our um, presentation or discussion we can send it via we can send it via the chat so that sister okay. if you can continue please um, thank you so like father suggested so via the chat please try to bring out the virtues we heard from the video that mother clelia tried to leave because she was in a intimacy with the heart of jesus like i said in the introduction the apostles have a mission for the family, consecrated to the heart of Jesus, to live the Christian life with deeper life and greater commitment. So each and every one of us, like the sister said in the video, the sacred heart of Jesus lives within each and every one of us, husband, wife, children, and parents have the mission to cultivate these attitudes in, the, in, in their children, the, those who live with them, to be able to love, to be able to forgive, to be able to be simple, to learn to be humble and meek. So this group of family, we call it Grand Family of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, working with a family in an experience in the spirituality and charism of Mother Clelia, so that they become one and identify and also assume their mission in the world as they bear witness the gospel. This spirituality is aimed at helping the families to become sharers in the charism of the heart of Jesus from the heart of Jesus, and we become imitators of the heart of Jesus. So in this mission, what are they called to do? To witness Christ in everyday life as apostles and missionaries. By our baptism, we are all called to be witnesses of Christ to the world. Our way, our way of life cannot be different from what we profess. Our faith is in Jesus. So we live like Jesus and we share his life and attitudes. The devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is aimed at learning to love learning to repair and to glorify the heart of Jesus. we we'll get to understand what it means to do reparation of the heart of Jesus. Families consecrated to the heart of Jesus take upon themselves to bring love to where there is no love. When our machines, our devices get spoiled, we take it to the repairer to fix it. So where love is wounded, where the heart of Jesus is not loved in our neighbor, we try to love for our own selves and love for those who do not love the heart of Jesus. What are the actions that inform our devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus? When we say we are Christians, when we try to live out this devotion in our families, we are called to become God's presence. We are called to honor for God the sake of his goodness because God is always good with us. We don't devote ourselves to the heart of Jesus because we are afraid of judgment. We do it because he himself is good towards us. Those of us who devote our lives and our hearts to the heart of Jesus try to render him our homage to give him back love for the love he gives us. We seek to adore him and offer him due honor. And this is from the encyclical on the sacred heart of Jesus, Aureatis Aque. We have four encyclicals that the popes wrote on the sacred heart of Jesus. 
It's not something invented, it's not an additional devotion, but it's the basis and foundation of our Christian faith. We can be Christians without love and love flows from the heart of Jesus. Our Christian duty and self-surrender is our next reason for becoming devoted to the heart of Jesus. It's our Christian duty to love God who first loved us, to love Jesus who gave up his life for us. And so that is what informs our choice of becoming devotees of the sacred heart of Jesus. We bring the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus into harmony with the whole spirit of Christian faith. So we say that, and the document states that devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is not defined by the external act of piety. Neither does it hold the most important place. Its essence is not to be found primarily in the benefits to be obtained. It's not like I'm being devoted to the sacred heart of Jesus with the hope of obtaining certain graces or miracles at the time that I'm praying, at the time that I'm making sacrifices for him. It is to encourage us to perform with greater fervor the chief duty of our Christian, our Catholic religion, love and reparation. God created us for love and out of love. So it is our duty to be love, make ourselves available to love, allow God to love our neighbor through us and to make for what is lacking in our lives in the love that others are supposed to receive. St. Paul said it, that we make up in the passion of Christ also was lacking. It's not because Christ did not suffer to the maximum. He did it, but we feel compelled because we also feel saved and want to also participate in that salvific mission that he came to realize. So specific actions as a devotee to the sacred heart of Jesus. We have the mission to pray. We need to live in communion. Prayer becomes a sign, a sense of our belongingness. It's a unity, a chain. At least we say that one decade of the rosary every day for our members, those who belong, those with whom we pray, we are devoted to the sacred heart. And then we become more devoted to Mary. We express this devotion to Mary with greater fervor. We can separate the love of Jesus from the love, the maternal love of Mary, because the word was incarnated. The heart of Jesus so because I'm a devotee of the sacred heart of Jesus, Mary has nothing to do in my life. The greater devotion we have for Mary, the greater devotion we can have for Jesus and his heart. And then most especially, we live the first Friday of the month in a very special way. About two to three days to come, we'll have the first Friday of the month of February. And on this first Friday of the month, we have to live it with special characteristics, special commitment making sacrifices, making acts of love and reparation to the sacred heart of Jesus. In our families, how do we make this acts of love concrete? How do we apply? How do we make it a reality, not just believing and reciting the prayers of the sacred heart of Jesus? How much are we committed to forgive husband and wife, parents and children? neighbors, how much are we ready to be honest in our workplaces, in our places of businesses, the, our daily activities, at least on the first Friday of the month, for love and reparation of the sacred heart of Jesus, we commit ourselves more to making sacrifices, growing in virtue, becoming more like Jesus. Devotion of the sacred heart.
I earlier on stated that devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is the source and purpose of all authentic Christian spirituality. Because we realize that the heart is the center of the person, the heart, Jesus himself. So if I'm a Christian, I believe in Christ. <laughs> I can believe in the hair of Christ, his will, his intellect, his obedience, all is born from his heart. Is the being of Christ. So all the devotions, all the spiritualities of Christianity are born from the heart of Jesus. There can be true Christian spirituality or devotion outside of the heart of Jesus. And the heart of Jesus, the document, the encyclical says that it is a mystical ladder which we climb to embrace the love of God. If we can't feel loved by the heart of Jesus, if we cannot love the heart of Jesus, if we cannot identify with the heart of Jesus, there is no way we can feel, leave that experience of the love of God. It is the most precious shrine which contains the unlimited treasures of his merits. It is the font of living water, and that is the title of the encyclical. You shall draw waters from the font, as prophesied by Isaiah. So Christ, the heart of Jesus, is the source of everything that makes us Christians and living for God alone. And then it says again that for Pius XI, that is another encyclical, Miserentissimo Redemptor. 1928, the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus contains the summary of our religion and a guide to a more Christian perfection. This first part is from the Aureatis Aquas. And the second part says that it easily leads our minds to know Christ the Lord intimately and more effectively turns our hearts to love him more ardently and to imitate him more perfectly. So it is that which moves us towards God, that which keeps us in union with God. And so it is only the sacred heart of Jesus through the immaculate heart of Mary that can keep us united as a family, family that is a domestic church that is why our christian faith begins also a family as a, a christian community a family as humanity so wherever we find ourselves this is what makes us distinct this is what makes us stand out as christians because we learn to identify with the heart of the one who loves us it is a devotion to the divine and human love of the incarnate word. Like I said, Jesus is not only God, he's not only God. So what makes us live like Jesus is realizing that we can live his heart. It is a willingness to give ourselves readily to the service of God. And where do we find the service of God? Or which service, perfect service to God? Where do we love from the very heart of Jesus? Sometimes there is confusion. People think that our devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is an invention of a few people that the church has never recognized it. So the document again states, the church has always valued the devotion to the most sacred heart of Jesus and provide for the spread of it among Christians. So it is the calling of the church for us to live this devotion, but most especially in our families, where the domestic church, because a family that leads the Christian value a family that lives an authentic Christian life, born from the heart of Jesus, is able to So if we have sister back, we can ask her to 
read take the last part and then we can open up for first things for her to continue at another time yeah. sorry about that interruption i would like to conclude but we want to take a few steps about the mix about devotion to the sacred heart of jesus maybe some other time if there is another opportunity we can go further to talk about the, the fruits the benefits and the impact of devotion to the sacred heart of jesus in our lives but for now there are a few myths about the sacred heart, the devotion. And this it's found in the document on in the encyclical, Aureatis Aquas, numbers 10 to 13. I will entreat my viewers, participants on this um, platform to just Google. Every authentic document of the church is on the Vatican site. So just go there and Google encyclicals on devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. And those documents will appear. It says that the contemplation of the physical heart of Jesus prevents, one of the myths is that the contemplation of the sacred heart of Jesus prevents an approach to close love of God and holds back the soul on the way to the attainment of the highest virtues. It's a myth, it's not true. So the Holy Father is trying to clarify, to say that it rather binds us, unites us more intimately to God and obtains grace and salvation for our souls. There are those Thank who you. also believe, even Catholics, that no creature, neither the blessed virgin or the saints ought to have a place in our hearts because God alone wishes to occupy it and possess it. So there shouldn't be acts of love for her or the saints or the humanity of Christ because the love we direct towards them is of the senses since its objects are also of the senses. So that is not true, but I will entreat you just because our time is already up, I will entreat you to try to look out for these documents on the devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus on the consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus and reparation of the sacred heart of Jesus. My prayer is that our families, our homes, our relationships be guided and informed and nourished by the love that flows from the heart of Jesus, especially through forgiveness, reconciliation, peace, joy, and communion, unity. Thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to share with you this experience of the love of the heart of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, very much, Sister, Sister Juliana, for this wonderful presentation. And uh, I'm sure we have learned one or two from the Sacred Heart of Jesus as a devotion that all of us should be, you know, devoted to. May I know whether there are questions or contributions or anything that would love to add or ask sister or anybody. So yeah, you may kindly unmute yourselves. You may kindly unmute yourself if you have to, and then you ask your question. You ask your question, please. Okay. At this time, I'll be rolling the, the, the slides for us to see some of the things that sister presented to us. And whilst I do that, if there are questions that we may want to ask, we can always do that now. You may send in your questions or contributions via the chat button also. Okay. Sister Julie, is she there? Yes, please, but I'm here. 
Okay, so if you can, on Thursday is the first Thursday of the month, and you did mention devotion to the first Friday. So this Thursday and subsequently Friday, what should we or how can we prepare ourselves effectively for the second month of the year 2020 as far as devotion to sacred art is concerned? Thank you, Father. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get to that because there is a relationship between the sacred heart of Jesus and the Holy Eucharist. And we know that Thursdays are devoted to the Blessed Sacrament, to Jesus present in the sacrament of the altar. So what we can do is that you have the adoration, I think, right, Father? I think yeah. Thursdays... Uh, um, so my church, I have yeah, a in, some, in other churches or other churches, they have their holy hour, which is good. Yes. Okay. As in yes. from, and the holy hour is coming from Jesus's command to his disciples sure. on the holy Thursday, watch yeah. with me for an hour. So mm -hmm. at least one hour is the minimum. So sister can yes. add, yes. <laughs> so you see the link between the Eucharist and the heart of Jesus. Why did Jesus call for the, that um, intimacy, that devotion on his first Friday after a Thursday. So even after the resurrection, the church teaches that Jesus's heart continues to beat. He is alive, he is present. So I just also want to suggest that perhaps after this encounter, we become more conscious, we become more aware and live it with deep faith and intimacy, the very presence of Jesus, the presence of his heart, in the Eucharist. We can separate devotion to the heart of Jesus from the, the Eucharistic devotion or adoration. Thank that you. is another important point. Actually, I have some of the miracles of the Eucharist and we'll realize that I have it in the slide 41. You realize that all the um, tissues that were tested in laboratories were cardiac tissues to symbolize that is the very heart of Jesus that we consume. So we can be different from what we receive and that informs our way of life. So we start this preparation with this um, openness to it. I don't know if I'll be able to answer your question further. Yes, yes, sister, yes, sister. Okay. okay. Is there, does anybody have a question to ask of sister or anything that you would love to share with us? Sacred Heart. Can anybody share? Do you, is there any any family that is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus? Is there any one of you whose whose family has been consecrated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, or does somebody want your family to be consecrated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and you want to know how it should be done? Okay. Sister, whilst it goes on, we would be, as we are ending, we would love you to lead us in a prayer very soon. And you would pray with us such that all of us will have true devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. But meanwhile, we have Trustilla Donto online and she may have a question or a contribution. Trustilla. Father, please, mine is Reverend Sister. Thank you so much. Even though Sunday, the sacred heart, the lunch, Secretary, the members, they were lunch and then they introduced some of them into it. And when I was there, I was very glad. So this evening, when I joined and, and then I heard you teaching on teachings on the secretary, I was very glad. And Father is asking if uh, you want your family to be, uh, uh, you want your family to be teacher to the secretary of Jesus. And then Father, I would like my family to be part of it. Very good. Okay. One of the ways that demands is that, you know, if it's a family that is, you know, like sister says that is very Eucharistic, the family, it goes with the Eucharist so that uh, once uh, the family is Eucharist and then uh, we have, you know, sacramental marriage there, you can always contact your priest or you contact any of the, you know, if you go to the secret, if you are in Accra, for example, you go to the secret heart of secret heart parish at Debbie Avenue 
or you contact Father Maunge or even me, I'll be able to direct you and help you for your family or your, your self consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus. Okay. Well, yes, Sister, yes. somebody asked a question. That yes. uh, I'm a trustee, are you are you okay? Yes, Father. Thank you so much, Reverend okay. Sister. Sister, somebody asked a question and says Thank that, you, Ma. Uh, yes. Well, um, you mentioned, explain what Sister said about the cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle, what does it mean? I think she, you are referring to the tissues that are, that are very close to the heart. But is, do you want to add anything to that as somebody's asking? Um, yes, Father. Is that Actually, the tissue of the heart is a heart tissue. Cardiac is the heart. Okay. So okay. The, the actual heart. But then what I have, I would have, I would love to add is that the document also refers to that, that um, devotion to the heart of Jesus is not the organ, the anatomical organ that I have in my heart, that you have in your heart. It's the person, the totality of Jesus. It's not a part of him because he is human and divine. So when we limit ourselves to the heart that is pulsating, that is beating, it's become just like we're worshiping an object and not the person, our savior, redeemer, Jesus Christ. But then the tissues of the Eucharist, if we have time, or I can leave it with Father. Some other sessions, we can just also listen to these experiences, how they happened. But it's the tissue of the heart. The heart tissue to say that okay. it's the, and it was beaten, the living person. Yes. What um, the, I, I, I want to believe, or just to add to what Sister has said, is that now uh, you remember when Sister was speaking just at the end or during the question time, she says that the Eucharistic, the Eucharistic miracles. So now there have been times where the Eucharist that we take, the communion, has turned into the body and blood, real body and blood. Now, what she is saying is that during those, uh, they have tested the tissue and it has been found to be of human origin. And it is it, the part that it belongs to. Like if you, it's, it may be, maybe you can say that, oh, this uh, flesh is of the flesh of the hand or of the leg or something like that. No, anytime they test it, it is always usual. It is usually what? The tissue coming from the heart. So when the body and when the communion turns into but a real body and blood and they test it in the laboratory, it is found usually to be what? Of the heart meaning that the heart of Jesus represents the totality of the personhood or of the divinity of Christ. This is what Jesus, uh, this is what sister has been helping us to say. Okay, somebody says that. Uh, thank you, Father. Thank you to sister, okay. Please, how do you consecrate our family to the sacred heart? Okay, sister, in a very short, uh, um, um, Wait, can you just, somebody's asking a question. Please, how do we consecrate our family to the sacred heart? Okay, and by the way, the people, sister, the people that are online, are uh, some of them or most of them are scattered throughout the whole world, not just in, um, in, in Accra. So if I'm not in Ghana and I want to have my family dedicated to the sacred heart, what do I do? So perhaps this will be something we can also consider because as of now, like I spoke at the beginning, we already have families in our places of mission that we call, they, they go through formation because they have chosen a specific way of living out this devotion of the sacred heart. We have the general consecration in the church, like Father explained, which you will see your parish priest and you desire because that also comes with the 12 promises Jesus made to St. Mary, uh, Ma yeah. Mary Magdalene Alacoque, you know? but there is that general one. But then also there is the dim dimension that we have as apostolate with the families. So in our places of mission, we have those families, they go through formation, they take commitment, they assume, and they participate in the mission, the apostolate in their own capacity. 
So when they go through this formation, we do the consecration and we do the enthronement of the sacred heart. So in that family, the heart of Jesus that reigns for them. It depends on which dynamics, which modality they opt for. But I think Father had already explained. But whoever wants to belong to the grand family of the sacred heart of Jesus, this is what we do. And they mm -hmm. have the options. Perhaps in the future, this is what we'll try to also consider because it becomes more like a lay group of consecration, a lay consecration also in the church. They are not religious, they are married, they have children, but they also form a sort of um, communion, a group of faithful who share their faith, who live in that chain of prayer and um, service of service to charity. Thank so you. So they have those options, yeah. Sister, the question here that I have, Father, if I want to contact Sister, is it allowed? Sister, sure. I hope you heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Father added me to the group, so the, yes. the code is plus three nine. I didn't say that. Um, my congregation actually is not in Ghana, so I, I'm based in Italy. And thank God we have this means of communication, so we can always be in touch and keep this group and have other moments of sharing and formation. So you can, my, my number is there on the platform. So those of you who live in Italy, Sister Juliana Dankwa is a Reverend Sister who will be working in uh, Italy, at uh, the Southern part of Italy. I'm sure most of you are, who are online are in the Northern part of Italy but you may have heard places that are good. And this will be one of the places where you can take advantage and go make a good retreat. I'm sure sister is very close to Lanciano and other places where uh, there have been Eucharistic miracles that you can also wear. So sister, we will give your number out to people who want to have a lot of devotion to the sacred heart yes. but for now I would also, we'll yeah ask. father sorry i would like to also mention that if there are some in the north of italy my sisters are also there and they have the groups there already too because okay. we are based in uh, the northern part as well but then you can always contact me and if there is any need to link them up to a specific community um i'll willingly do that thank you thank you very much so my dear friends, this is, where time, this is what time will permit us to do for today. And we shall respectfully ask Sister Juliana Dankwa to pray with us. And at another time, we shall bring another person online to be able to help us. And uh, I think that from time to time, I'd love to have uh, the religious come to explain to us some of their, their charisms and some of their spirituality. And we will be so much amazed at the richness of the, of the church when it comes to religious life and things like that. So, well... Uh, this is where time will permit us to be. So, Reverend Sister, if um, you would lead us now in the prayer, and then we can end. And I will give the blessing after your prayer, please. Thank you, Father. I will make a prayer to the sacred heart of Jesus. O most holy heart of Jesus, fountain of every blessing, we adore thee, we love thee, and with a lively sorrow for our sins, we offer thee this poor hearts of ours. Make us humble, patient, pure, and wholly obedient to thy will. Grant goodness, grant good Jesus that we may live in thee and for thee. Protect us in the midst of danger. Comfort us in our afflictions. Give, our, give us health of body, assistance in our temporal needs your blessing on all that we do and the grace of a holy death. Within thy heart, we place our every care. In every need, let us come to thee with humble trust saying, Jesus, heart of Jesus, help us. Heart of Jesus, I place my trust in you. Sacred heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come, amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you also with you.
spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us remain in the peace of Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you all very thank much. And God bless you richly. God bless you all and thank you. Bye bye. Thank, 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 thank you, sister. Thank you, family. May we stay united in the heart of Jesus. Amen. 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 This is the secure place of our refuge. Thank you. Thank you, sister.